I'm sure all of you folks can relate. You load up gear, you set out to the woods, you're ready for a fun-filled day of adventure. You get up there, then you realize that a key component of gear that you were supposed to bring, you left it home in your garage. Well, today that happened to me. Got all loaded up, thought I had everything, took off up here to the woods for an awesome day of shooting film, testing out gear and such, and then realized I don't have any tripods. So now what turned into a pretty cool film shoot is now going to be a vlog. And today I'm showcasing the Crossman 362. I just sighted it in and I'm just doing a quick woods walk with it. I'm going to be doing an upcoming collab video with Dana over at Mountain Sport Air Guns. And we're going to be doing a survival challenge with these multi-pump pneumatic air guns. Now, a lot of folks are saying, why did you guys choose these? Well, we wanted to have affordable options for you folks out there. Something that isn't going to break the bank. Something that is um, accessible to a lot of folks out there. You can buy these anywhere. You can buy them at Walmart, your big box, sporting goods stores, and even online. And we thought that it would be a fun challenge just to get out in the woods and see what we could do with these air guns. Now, as you guys noticed, I churched this one up. This is now not the stock version. And the reason because of that is plain and simple. We had a, a four power scope and the scope mounts that go around the barrel. Well, the barrel doesn't secure very well in that plastic breech. And when I put those clamps on and when I had the scope and the Tacticam on, it was just too much weight and the barrel was rotating back and forth. And I had some issues uh, that it created with the transfer port and then I had valve lock. So what I did was I went to my parts bin and I had a Baker Air steel breech in 22 caliber i put that on that secured everything nice and tight then i put on a uh, three by nine center point scope and put on my tag cam now this bad boy is just dialed in uh, i sighted it in for about 20 yards and it's shooting pretty good so what we're going to do today is just walk around. I'm glad you guys could come with me. Just like we do when we're squirrel hunting, we always got to get confirmation. Oh yeah, we got it. Dead pine cone, folks. We're out here keeping it fun. I'm sure a lot of you folks are just like me. That just sometimes you feel you're born probably about 130, 140 years late. What it would have been like to be out here in the 1870s, 1880s and everything was new, a lot of stuff was undiscovered, and it was just this sense of adventure and wild. A lot of folks are missing that today, and it's a shame. I'm just happy and blessed that I'm still able to get out here doing what I love and sharing it with you folks out there, and I'm so glad that I'm able to bring you along with me, and if it satisfies that feeling for you just for a short length of time then it was worth the effort to make these videos we have a little bit of critter activity out here but it's a slow day it's around 42 degrees out here i'm at 5500 feet of elevation and ground squirrels and such are going to be bunkered down at this time until the temperatures warm up just a bit. Guys gotta be very quiet. I see another one. There's a pine cone in the wild right there. Look at 
to sneak up and see if we can get another shot on it. A lot of people are going to ask, why did we choose these air guns, the Crossman 362s? One, simplicity. You don't need any extra gear, not like shooting CO2s, not like shooting PCPs where you're dependent on an air source. CO2 is just way too temperature regulated. And springers, unless you're getting like the nitro technology, you can't leave them cocked for an extended period of time. And sometimes in extreme cold weather, springs fail. And if, instance, you have a dry fire and then all of a sudden you've uh, messed up the spring and now you're out of commission. With the multi-pump pneumatics, technology has been around for close to 100 years, maybe even more. And... I like the way that you can regulate the power. Now we chose 22 caliber. I think for what we're doing, that's probably the best choice in regards to any sort of small game hunting, whether it's raccoons, whether it's birds, whether it's jackrabbits and such. Now I'm not going to kid myself. The effective range of this air gun is probably going to be under 40 yards. I ethically, unless I was in an extreme situation, wouldn't take a shot past 40 yards uh, with this air gun. Uh, it's just a not enough foot pounds of energy to uh, effectively dispatch humanely, say a cottontail rabbit or a jackrabbit or a coon or such. So it just gives us something to think about. I have some crows that are photobombing me right now it's kind of cool these my friends are coulter pine cones and just to give you an idea how large these are look at that block of wood that's why i don't come up here on high wind days i would hate to get hit by one of these but they're all over the place the ground is just littered with them Here's one of my favorite trees. Now, this is a small one. It's a manzanita. They grow a lot bigger. There's another one over there, another one over there as well. Reason I'm pointing them out is normally they'll get these berries on them and I'll uh, insert some footage if I have any from earlier this year going out. And the Native Americans would use those berries. One, they were edible, and you could eat the berries just the way they are, or you could make a tea out of them. And it was just one resource that they had as they were traveling through, transitioning back down into the desert. In my neck of the woods here, in the high desert mountain ranges on the backside of Mount Laguna and that area, a lot of history in this area. The Kumbia Indians occupied this area for a very long time and they were seasonal, they were nomadic. They would come up here in the higher elevations at summer to get away from the blistering heat from the desert down below. Then during the cooler months, such as this, they would head down into Borrego towards the Salton Sea and they would live down there and they did a lot of trading. They would come up here mainly for a lot of the acorns and they would make a lot of food out of the acorns that they uh, gathered. And every once in a while, up here you'll come across in the granite rocks just little uh mortars in the ground where they would grind up the acorns into a uh, fine flour and then they would make their bread and such with that so just a lot of really cool history up here 
but a lot has changed over the years. Water sources that were on a map 40, 50, 60 years ago, they're not here anymore. I mean, we look at topos and we head off and we try to find stuff all the time. And a lot of time it's gone. Uh, we don't get the rain that we used to get. I've been out in San Diego now about almost 38 years. Gosh, it's been a long time. And we don't get the rain that we used to get back in the day. But uh, up here, it's still holding on. A couple things I pointed out in a prior video about the 362 that I liked, other than the ergonomics, was the trigger pull. I was really surprised how the trigger pull was on this air gun. Most air guns in this price range, you would think, oh my God, it's going to be featured for teenagers and kids. We got to have a 10 or 12 pound trigger pull. This was somewhere, I think, around three and a half pounds, which isn't bad for a hunting gun. And there's mods where you can adjust these triggers. So it's not a bad kit. And you cycle it anywhere between three and eight pumps. You can control the velocity. And as you can see, as I was shooting some of the pine cones, I took my time pumping it up. I didn't want to overheat the system. And I always extend it uh, to its full length. That way it gets a full uh, volume of air going in that chamber. With that, it's pretty much maintenance free put a little bit of uh, Pell oil every once in a while in the pivot points in the plunger, and then you're good to go. So I'm looking forward to uh, coming out here and doing that survival challenge. So I got a pine cone, 30 yards down there, sitting on a log. We're gonna see if we can't take it down. We hit it, but it's heavy. Got to do a follow up. Hit it at the base of it. Up shot got him i know a lot of you folks are just like me you like getting out in the woods playing around just forgetting about the troubles of the day and life in general and just pretending that we're teenagers again and you know what for a small investment i was able to do that today when you're looking at spending probably the whole kit it's under 200 bucks and to be able to come out here, walk around. Yeah. We're popping pine cones. We're having fun. Who cares? You know, we're just having a great time and I'm glad you folks could come along with me on this little nostalgic woods walk. I'll be showcasing the 362 a little bit more. I'm not going in depth on the specs. There's a lot of channels out there that are just shooting paper, punching holes in paper and such with them and giving you all the specs. I want to talk about the fun factor. And today I had a lot of fun with the Crossman 362. And I hope you had a lot of fun joining me. Folks, with that, take care. And I'll see you on the next video.